I have a confession to make. You know, we're in the middle of this series on healing that really has been absolutely amazing. We're calling it Healed. And the reason that we get so excited about this is the fact that we're not just talking about it. We're actually seeing God do it. That we're holding weekly prayer meetings through Zoom and people are walking in in pain and they're walking out without the pain. That they're walking in in a brace and walking out without it and with full dexterity. And I had something prepared to share with you today and I got to tell you that I cannot in good conscience go where I wanted to go. Because there's something that... I have been burdened by. There there is something that I'm actually losing a little bit of sleep over, that my heart is heavy, and I believe that God wants me to share with you, but if I'm completely honest, I don't want to say it out loud. Last week, Joshua began to talk about this idea of obedience. What do you do? How do you, what do you do when God asks you to pray for somebody that you don't actually want them to get healed? What do you do if you're scared? What do you do when God says jump? Well, we say, how high? At the end of his talk, he had three questions that he placed, and I hope that you're looking at those. I hope that you're discussing them. I hope that you're processing them. And the first question that he asked was, was there ever a time where you were disobedient to God when he asked you to pray for someone? And if so, why? Well, I have a confession to make that immediately I had a thought in my mind that God brought to my remembrance a story of somebody that I knew that he was asking me to pray for, for healing. That there was a condition that the doctors have said, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. Um, We're just going to maintain for the rest of your life, but this is what it is. And I felt God ask me to pray for that person, but I didn't. I didn't because I was scared of what it might, what they might think of me when I say that out loud. And I was also... I, I was also too proud to be able to put myself on the line and say, God, what if I pray and you don't do anything? And those stopped me from stepping out in faith. And in that moment, I realized that, that what I had done was wrong. That I was more concerned about what people thought of me. And these people are friends. I was more concerned what people thought of me than the opportunity that God wanted to do something in their life. And so today, with that spirit, I need to come to you and tell you that, yes, I called immediately. I took a next step. I asked for forgiveness. I explained, and I invited to join us for our prayer healing meeting. But in that spirit, I need to be obedient to what God is asking me to share with you today. And it's this. This is out of my comfort zone. I received an email this week about what we're doing here at the church. And the person who sent the email told me, I've got to be honest, this is out of my comfort zone. I have seen the ads. I have seen the messages. I've seen the emails. And I've just ignored each one of them quite happily. But God spoke to me. God put it on my heart that I needed to participate. Pastor Kyle, this is out of my comfort zone. Can I be honest? It's out of my comfort zone too. That there are things that each of us will naturally gravitate towards. And a lot of the time in our human nature, those are just the things that we know already. That we will just go back to the things that we know that we're comfortable with. And and we do this all the time. That we would rather operate even when God is asking us to do something in the space that we're comfortable And go back to what we know already. And for those of you who are in North America, our 21st century North American church falls prey to this very issue. And maybe you're watching today and you're saying, Pastor Kyle, that's not me. Well, congratulations on being holier than the rest of us. But I think that each of us can relate to at least a time or two in our life where God is calling us to step out of our comfort zone and be bold in our faith in something that maybe we haven't experienced before and we hesitate. 
You see, there's this pattern and this idea that we follow that when it comes, that we celebrate what God does through others, but we hesitate at what God wants to do through us. This really has been on my heart this week and my pastor, Pastor Clark Young, an incredible man of God, whom I love dearly, he, he pastors the church where I served last as the associate in Arnprior, Ontario. He had a Facebook Live video that he shared and in just such a caring and compassionate way began to communicate on this idea of going and growing and which one comes first and, and what's necessary. You know, do we grow first and then go or do we go and then we grow? And I asked him if it was okay if I shared a portion of that with you today. And I hope you'll watch and hear what he has to say because he says it so well and with so much love in his heart. And I want to share it with you right now. Uh, so I want to just read you a scripture and then share a couple of quick thoughts today. And the scripture is from Acts chapter 3. So this fall, we're going to be uh, looking at the book of Acts. We're going to be doing a series in the book of Acts. I'm excited about that. Just a really incredible book of scripture that uh, it kind of lives up to its name. It just talks about all of the acts, all of the activity of the early church. And when the church was born, when people experienced the spirit of God dwelling in them, and when they began to gather together and become an incredible force for good, uh, then there were some things that are recorded in the book of Acts. And so one of the things that I want to read for you, I'm hoping this isn't too shaky, I'm holding the phone here, is um, Acts chapter 3. So just listen to what Scripture says. They, speaking of those who had put their faith in Christ, the, those who made up the church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to the fellowship, or and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, which is celebrating communion, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were uh, were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, just a quick snapshot of uh, the early church and just how that looked. It's so important for uh, every church family, every group of believers that make up a church family, uh, to have a real sense of purpose uh, in, in terms of, you know, what is God's mission for us? What, what are we collectively called to do? And so uh, Glad Tidings is no different. We need to continually come back to the things that we find in God's Word that actually inform us as to what it means to be a church family. And some of these things we find in that passage in Acts, where there is fellowship. What that means is there's relationship, there's caring for one another, there is a devotion to seeking God in prayer. There is a commitment to that collectively, not just in our own prayer closet, but collectively. There is a caring for one another in practical ways. And uh, people even sold homes that they had. If they had extra, they would use that to bless those who didn't have enough. And so there's this amazing snapshot of what it means uh, to be the church. We're going to explore that a bit this fall. But let's come back to those two words. What two words are hanging in our uh, auditorium, in our sanctuary? Now, I can't really see the comments. Perhaps some of you have commented already. But I'm going to try to just show those to you. Try not to make you too dizzy here. So let me show you those words that are in uh, our sanctuary. I guess I'm going to have to do it this way. Now, I'm thinking these words are going to be backwards, but there is the word grow and there is the word go. So those are the two words that are in our sanctuary. And so every week, whenever we have been gathering here, they are meant to be a reminder to us of two words that kind of capture what we need to be all about. There needs to be an aspect where we are growing. We are growing in our walk with God. We are growing in our love for him. We are growing in our love for people. Uh, and then the second word that we have is the word go. 
And that means that there's an active piece to our faith where uh, we're not just called to enjoy the blessing of God in our, in our uh, lives and to kind of keep it to ourselves. But no, there is, you know, God has a purpose for his church. And it is that we would go. We are sent. We are sent to be um, beacons of light to people and hope. Uh, you know, so the other question is, which order should those words be in? So if we look at those two words, go and grow, what's your thought on that? Which order should we have those in as they are hanging in our sanctuary? Well, there was a little bit of debate on that as we were, when um, those banners were developed and we got ready to hang them, the question was, you know, you t- typically you read from left to right. Which banner should go on the left and which should go on the right? Should we start with go or should we start with grow? What do you think? Well, we decided to put the word go on the left-hand side, that that would be the first word that your eye is drawn to, and then grow would be on the right-hand side. Now, we know that these things kind of happen simultaneously, but here's the thing. If it's all grow and we forget to go, then we just become fat in our faith, right? If there's no outlet, if we're not actually serving the purposes of God, he, he has things that he's called us to do, to work through us, to bless others, to bring hope. If we just think, well, my job is just to grow, just to understand more of who God is and to grow in my faith. Uh, if it's all grow and no go, then we just become fat. In fact, uh, the question probably is, if you think you're growing and there's no go to your life, there's no outlet, then maybe you're not really growing. Because I think as we grow in our walk of faith, God puts in us a deeper desire to love people, to be part of his plan for people. Uh, Now, the other hand of that, I guess the other side of the coin, if it's all go and no grow, then we become shallow. If we're not taking time in our own walk with God to grow deep in our knowledge of God experientially, in our knowledge of God through his word, if we're not maturing, but we're very busy reaching out, then what, what the danger is is that we become shallow in our faith. And uh, something a storm will come along that will, that will just wreck us because we haven't really learned to deepen our faith in God. And so I guess the answer is both of those things need to happen simultaneously. But we decided to put grow first, or sorry, go first, because here's the thing. We can be tempted to come Sunday after Sunday and and be fed in God's word, and have fellowship together, and very little uh, outflow happens through the week. Sometimes we think, you know, I'm not mature enough to reach out to someone and to, you know, to share my faith or to be really used by God, so I just got to grow some more. Well, here's the thing. I think we need to just make the decision to go, to take steps of faith, and along the way, boy, when you begin to step out and be obedient, then there's a lot of growth that happens along the way. So while it is simultaneous, I think my preference would be to put the word go first. Let's go, and along the way, as we are spending time with God, we mature. As we are taking steps of faith, we mature. We're not just waiting until we're perfect to try to do what God is calling us to do. We're stepping out in faith. Now, interesting thing that happened with the banners here, they've been taken down and put up before, And somewhere along the way, just for different events, somewhere along the way, someone decided to switch those. (laughs) So the one on the left currently is grow, and the one on the right is go. And someone must have thought, you know, grow needs to come first. Before you can go, you have to grow. Well, we should probably switch those back. Uh, And again, it's it's kind of a simultaneous thing. But I want to encourage you today. If you've been waiting, thinking, boy, I can't, I can't really step out in what God's asking me to do because I'm not mature enough yet. I'm not strong enough yet. I don't know God's word enough yet. I don't have enough experience yet. Boy, just let's go. And along the way, yes, let's mature. Let's um, allow God to grow us. But boy, let's, let's go and grow simultaneously. Let's make that decision to go. All grow and no go leaves you fat. Well, spiritually speaking. And here's why I just couldn't continue in our series today with the next narrative of people who stepped out of their comfort zone, 
who stepped out in, in faith and in obedience to Jesus and with the authority of his name and not their own. And, and they see mir miracles and, and healing occur. And we're experiencing the same thing as well. And, and those are amazing to look at and encouraging and faith building. But if the response to those stories is simply, man, how cool is that? Look at what God did. That, isn't that great to see what's happening in those people's lives? Now, what's for lunch? Listen, if, if that's all that this leads us to, then we have to ask the question, what is the point? It's fruitless. Don't get me wrong. There are good things happening. There are great things happening. And for as much as God has been moving and we celebrate that, I have a heavy burden that this is happening not with our church community as a whole. And my friends, when I say church, I don't mean a building. I mean a community of believers of Jesus who are united by a vision and a mission to step out of the walls and go and be the church that many of us are only spectating instead of participating. Listen, this is what we believe about what's happening right now. We believe that God led us to this moment. That it wasn't my idea, that it wasn't the board's idea that we begin to talk about healing, but it was actually an idea that God laid on all of our hearts and minds and that we took a step of faith to be obedient to that and begin to see those things happen. And I don't think we're off because we're seeing those things happen. But the reality is, let's be honest, it doesn't look the way that we expected it to look. I know that this is new for some of us and maybe we didn't have any idea of what it was going to look like, but we certainly didn't think it was going to look like it does right now. I mean, how many people in their vision messages at their church for the year 2020 saw this coming? I mean, if we had this conversation one year ago today, you'd be saying, Pastor Kyle, you're crazy. What are you talking about? Well, God isn't surprised by the coronavirus. Don't you think that God knew that our prayer meetings were going to be on Zoom and not in person? And the reality is that if God knew that ahead of time and he asked us to do it, we still need to do it. We need to participate because if we don't find a way, then we're actually acting in disobedience to what he has called us to as a church. And listen, I have a desire for us to gather together physically. Absolutely, I do. That this is not the primary means by which we ever envisioned church happening. Now, I want to say, though, that we will continue to do online ministry and, and have committed to do that with excellence to encourage people around the world. But particularly, if you live in the area of our physical building, of course we want to be together. Of course we want to pray together. Of course we want to do those things. But I want to share with you today that maybe the idea that that a prayer meeting or that a physical gathering, that the, the only place that I can go to experience a spiritual recharge, the only place that I can go to experience, <coughs> pardon me, the presence of God and experience what he's doing, that that's an hour on a Sunday morning in that building. Well, we do want to experience, experience those things. And we do experience those things. And it's amazing and we want to experience the presence of God together but I don't think it's a biblical model that says that that is the only place that it should happen I think that as we take steps towards having physical gatherings the picture that I want to give you is that they that, that our physical gatherings should be like the cherry on top of your ice cream sundae Think about it this way, the meat, the body, the ice cream, the banana, the, the, <clears throat> the sprinkles and, and, and the whipped cream, that those, all of the things that make up the ice cream sundae, that the little cherry on the top, it's the celebration. It's the thing that just puts it over the edge, that, that we actually come back for a physical gathering to celebrate, not to just experience God's presence, 
but to celebrate everything that he's done in our week up until that point and to preach the word so that we are equipped to go forward and be the church as we leave the walls. Guys, we're in a season right now where we need to be the church outside of the walls of a building. Long distance ministry may not be ideal, but it's not a new idea. Paul, the one who was once Saul, who experienced Jesus, who had an encounter with Jesus, and Jesus changed his life. He changed his name. He became the greatest church planter in the history of the world, wrote most of the New Testament. That there are many times over and over again in scripture where he says, I long to be with you. But since I cannot, I write you these words. Acts chapter two, uh, 26 verse 29. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And many of these times where he says, I long to be with you, but I can't. Many of those times it's, it's actually because he's in prison for preaching Christ crucified and ushering in demonstrations of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so long distance ministry may not be ideal, but it's not a brand new idea in response to the coronavirus. But here's the truth. It requires intentionality. If we are to be obedient to what we believe God has asked us to do, we need to find a way to make it a priority. And full disclosure, the reason that our prayer meetings happen on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock, it's because that's just the time that we picked. Like, that's pretty much it. And so, honestly, it doesn't matter to me if we're meeting Wednesdays at 8 or Mondays at 4 or Saturdays at 3. Provide some feedback. Let us know when we can gather virtually to pray with and for one another. To be obedient in what God has asked our church to do. Not a select number of people from this community to participate in. And for the rest of us to sit on the sidelines and simply observe. Let us know when we can gather together in that capacity so that we can pray with and for one another. With this idea of intentionality, I want to tell you, don't wait. I mean, it's great. It's great for us to get together for prayer meetings and to have lots of people there. That is true. But you know what's even better than that? When you don't wait for a prayer meeting, but you say, I've seen what God has done in my life. And because he's touched me, because he's transformed me, because he's healed me, or I've seen the story of what he's done, I'm going to go and share that with the people in my life. That I don't need to wait until Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, because I can just pick up the phone and call. Listen, one of the most encouraging testimonies through this whole process has not been somebody that was healed, because the point of healing isn't actually a healing, it's to point people towards Jesus. But the person who got healed responded with so much boldness that when their co-workers expressed that they had some sort of ailment and pain in their body, she simply responded by saying, well, my God's a healer and he healed me. So let me pray for you. That's, that is being the church. That is doing what God has asked us to do, to step out of our comfort zones and to go and in the process also grow. So I want to challenge you today that as you go on the rest of your day, as you go throughout this week and you go to Walmart to get your groceries, how about this? Instead of being passive and waiting for God to interrupt you to ask you to pray for somebody, that you would be active, that you would be proactive and you would ask him before you get out of your car and step into the store, God, is there somebody you would like me to pray for today, even as I go into the grocery store? And as God puts somebody on your heart, declare your obedience to him ahead of time and just see what he does. Finally, share with intention. Because we're not physically together, there are some bonuses. We get to be encouraged by people all around the world, but we need to be intentional and share those things so that our faith, that the faith of the people around you who might live in a different home, 
that their faith, faith can also be encouraged. That it can be increased so that they have the faith to step out and be obedient as well. And so if you have experienced healing, or if God has touched your life in some capacity, or he's put it on your heart to pray for somebody and you did, let us know so that we can share it with the people in our community and see our faith encouraged and increased as well. Email me, kyle at cornerstonelively.com. We will never publish your information without your permission. I guarantee you that. But I want to let you know that we need to hear your stories of what God is doing because it's maybe not even just for you, but it's for all of the people around you who need their faith encouraged as well. You know, sometimes I think when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, when it comes to miracles and signs and wonders, that we grieve the Holy Spirit when we keep them to ourselves. Because the gifts that God has given us were never meant for us to hoard within a building, within four walls. The gifts were given so that we would be empowered to minister to others, so that it would point people and their attention towards Jesus, and they would have an opportunity to seek relationship with him. And so lastly, I want to share with you today, before we call it, and I ask you to step out in faith with boldness, out of your comfort zone, I want to ask you to invite those and to pray for those people in your life, that you know do not yet know Jesus. And even when they are not a follower of Jesus yet, that you still bring them to the meeting, that you still pray for them to be healed to their face, with them, on the phone, via email, via Zoom, that you would do those things not only with the people who already belong to a church, but with the people in your life who do not yet follow Jesus. You know, we say that our vision is to take steps closer to Jesus. And so I want to ask you a simple question today that I think that that statement demands that we ask. If our vision really is something that has come from God, he really has placed it on our hearts to see people take steps closer to Jesus, I want to ask you right now, what step are you going to take closer to Jesus this week? Step out of your comfort zone. It's time to go and grow at the same time. Father, we love you. And I pray that this word, that it, that it finds a place in our hearts, that we would be able to respond to it and hear what you have to say to us. That each and every one of us would respond as you speak to us. Not my words. God, I know that I'm imperfect, but you are not. And so I ask that your truth would land in our hearts and that we would respond with faithfulness and that we would respond with boldness, not to do what I ask, not to do what this church asks, but to do what you ask of us. So I pray this in the name of the risen King Jesus. Amen.